Hello everyone, Impiator here, and welcome back to my beginner's guide for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is part 12. So, in the last episode, we ended up wrapping out the Guardian Ape, and we're actually going to be fighting the Guardian Ape again. Uh, only this time it'll be the Headless Ape, since the uh, he lost his head in the last episode. So, uh, we're going to be doing that in this episode, and sorry for being a little late. I've uh, been busy with work been on weird hours and so I'm a couple days behind where I normally am on my uploads so hopefully I'll be able to play catch up again last I kind of expected it so uh, some of you who uh, who follow more regularly may have noticed that I up uploaded a whole bunch of videos over the week over last weekend leading kind of into the week and so that was try kind of trying to get ahead a little bit in prep for the fact that Final Fantasy 7 remake is out I've got a couple of episodes uh, worth of content into that already, uh, though I'm still doing editing, so that'll probably be out, I'm going to guess, maybe tonight or tomorrow. So look out for that. But I am going to plan to continue to do uh, walkthrough episodes um, at minimum daily uh, going, to, uh, going forward, as long as I'm able to keep up the pace. But until then, let's go ahead and head over to the Sunken Valley. I'm sorry, the Ashina Depths. And you might remember that we unlocked the Ashin Adepts whenever we were facing the Shichiman Warrior. So <clears throat> that was at the Abandoned Dungeon area. So we did that, and then we actually found the other entrance to it, the Poison Pool, at the end of the last episode, just before we faced off against the Guardian Ape. So I'm going to recommend that as our kind of way to complete this area, because there's a mini-boss in here, and depending on how you approach it, it can be... Uh, more painful or less painful. So now that we're over here, we're going to go up the side here. There's some oil on the ground here. We're going to get a backstab off of this enemy. So a couple things to worry about. Uh, there is a mini boss over. This is one of the snake eyes type enemies. There's a guard who will shoot explosives at you. Who is kind of patrolling this area. There is another one over there who is lying in wait as well. Problem is, uh, they're all kind of facing each other, so the best thing that we can do is backstab the snake eyes once to get a death blow off, and then we're going to lure them behind the statue, and then we're going to try to kill them from there without the other two noticing us. So, that's going to be the plan. So let's go ahead and pop over here. We're going to grab the pellet, grapple over here. We've got some upgrade materials to pick up, so grab those. Then I'm going to start sneaking, and we want to wait for this enemy to come around the bend and make a turn. That way they don't see whenever we get to the stabby stabby. Okay. So that alerted him, but uh, he can't see us, so he's not actually, you know, alerted, alerted. So it's worth mentioning, that is not technically a grab attack. I um, made that mistake of thinking that last time, and I, I was actually able to get off a... What do you call it? A, a deflection on that attack. There, like that. Anyway, just uh, keep doing deflections, keep up the pace, keep up the aggression, and you should be fine. So that's going to get us a prayer bead. And where'd he go? Okay. So we're going to wait for him to come around again. Try to get him dead before this guy notices us, and then we're going to go off to kind of the side there to grab that item. And that should allow us to avoid being seen. Could also waste the Gashin sugar, but I don't think we're going to need it. Let's go. Okay, so I got a, got a coin purse. And we're 
about to be infected, so let's equip Green Mossy Gourd, since I did end up buying it in the last episode. And that'll give us some resistance. So, I sometimes have rotten luck trying to sneak behind this guy. Because he's going to hear us as we get up, but looks like I was lucky. Cool. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and climb up here. And we're going to want to grapple that. Uh, aiming for the grapple is kind of weird, so I'll usually jump to make it. And then we got a scrap magnetite there. And then we got more upgrade materials down here. And a Mubu Possession Balloon. Next, we're going to go get those two items that we have to climb up this uh, area inside here first. So, pop into here. Grapple up. Go under here. And turn left. There's a little hidden alcove here. Do some wall jumps. And grab the yellow gunpowder. Pop up here for another prayer bead. And then we're going to go back down. Now, if you feel that you need to, you can go back to rest at the Sculptor's Idol. Because we are about to head into the boss arena now. Uh, this is going to be Monkey Booze, by the way. So this will be the last set of it, set of it that we have. So uh, getting this is going to allow us to have Ishin have his Monkey Booze, too. So again, we want each of the NPCs, the Sculptor... Emma, as well as Ishin, all drink the various types of alcohol because they'll reveal more beats to the story, basically. All right, so unfortunately, we did not actually kill the boss at the end of the last episode, apparently. But we're going to fix that today. So let's talk about what we're going to do for this one. So we're starting the fight in basically the second phase of the last fight. So we're going to go ahead and equip the loaded spear again. However, in the second phase, things are going to change a little bit because it's going to perform a scream and it's going to call on, I'm assuming it's its, uh, it's mate, to, uh, to come join it in combat. And we're going to want the firecrackers for that. Now, it's kind of up to you as well if you have struggles with deflecting this particular enemy. The loaded umbrella can still be beneficial to you. I personally don't find it that much easier, but you can basically use it. Well, shoot, I did not mean to do that. Uh, you can use it, and then as the enemy's attacks come, you can press right bumper. So I'm holding um, right trigger right now, and then as you press, uh, and I said le right bumper, left bumper. So if I press left bumper, it will do this kind of spin of the umbrella. And what that will end up doing is it'll actually uh, do a deflection, but your timing doesn't need to be as strict. I don't think it's that beneficial. I'm kind of not that great at the timing for it. I actually think I'm better at the timing for just a normal deflection, but it's kind of up to you. So since I ended up using some of those spirit emblems I didn't intend to use. I'm going to go ahead and head back to the idle rest to refill them. Now this is the only one we really got to worry about. And I prefer to do the fight from up here as opposed to down there because we can get closer to the boss quicker. Okay. So, uh, the way the second fight's going to work, by the way, is uh, the two apes are going to be kind of tied at the hip. And the firecrackers are going to be useful because whenever the ape screams, the, the white ape... Uh, the other ape is going to chase us, and uh, that will enable us to hit it with firecrackers. And once we hit it with firecrackers, we have the ability to uh, hit it quite a lot. Um, a good seven or eight times, I think. However, if you've got Akko's Sugar and you're lucky, you might be able to nail it in a single round of that. So 
I'm going to try to time it so I use Akko Sugar, <clears throat> and then um, and then I use the Spring Loaded Firecracker, and then I start just wailing on it. Uh, another thing that can benefit you with this is the Whirlwind Slash, uh, something that can get off hits quick. Again, this is going to be a, what do you call it? A posture fight against one of the bosses, the White Monkey, and then the other monkey is going to be a health fight or a posture fight. So... Either which way, though, we want to basically make sure that we kill it as quickly as possible. Um, and another way that we can uh, basically draw out this enemy to do its scream is basically just to get off a hit, run away. Get off a hit, run away. Eventually, it'll, it'll scream at us. So uh, with that, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and equip the loaded spear. I'm going to make a run for it. Now I'm going to try to get behind the boss as I'm kind of doing multiple whirlwind slashes because he's going to turn around anyway. So we have <clears throat> There we go. He's going to jump. So you're going to jump. So here's your opportunity to get in a hit. We should be able to finish it off this first phase right here. There we go. All right, so it may try to take a swing at you. Otherwise, now we're going to go and equip the Firecrackers and Akko Sugar. And we want to stay locked on to the White Monkey for this. But we want to pay attention to the other one. We want to try to get in a good hit or two if we can. And eventually we'll get it to do a scream. Sometimes this jerk just will not cooperate with us. There's the scream. Get the sugar out. Hit him with that. Do lots of damage to him. Make sure to chase him down whenever he falls. Because you might be able to get him. You might get lucky. Are we going to get lucky? Do it again. Oh, yeah. Okay, now back the F off from this guy. So, again, if you want to use this... Like I said, the timing is a little bit more forgiving. I don't think it's that much, though. Anyway, we're going to go with the loaded spear. I'll be, I'll be fine with that. Oh, I hate that one. I'm terrible at, at his... Hey, good timing. All right, so... Come on, come on. There we go. So if you hit him fast enough, you will... They'll basically get him to escape out of his animation for that uh, that attack. And he is dead. Sweet. And that is the Headless Ape. We're going to get a memory. We're going to get two prayer beads, so uh, that's going to be cool. So we now have four. We'll get another necklace here in a moment. Uh, but there's one last thing to do. Walk up to him, and because we now have the ability to do this, now we have a new ability unlocked.
So now we have the Bestowal Ninjutsu. Let's go take a look at what that is. So this is the last of the three ninjutsus that we're going to get. We've got the Bestowal one now. And basically what this does is it uh, creates a, white, a longer sword, basically, by attaching blood to your sword. The caveat, though, is it A, requires seven spirit emblems to cast. In addition, in order to use it, you, of course, have to perform a backstab on an enemy. So it is going to be fairly situational. Though I will say one thing that can make it easier is going to be an ability that we don't currently have yet. Though it's not one I'm necessarily going to prioritize getting for this playthrough. In later playthroughs, I would suggest getting it. And that's going to be the Vault Over ability. So since that particular ability, the Bastol Ninjutsu, can only be had by doing a backstab, Vault Over allows you to posture break an enemy and then flip over them and then perform a backstab. So those go well together like peanut butter and jelly so definitely something to consider in our case though um <clears throat> we do not have enough spirit emblems <laughs> can never have enough spirit emblems so i'm going to recommend that we start down the mid-air prosthetic tool path now uh and go ahead and get both of these items next and then depending on kind of your um play style if you are having struggles you might also consider getting the emma's potency there's two versions of it both of them will increase the healing effects of your recovery items. Um, I tend to get these last, though, because at least for a first playthrough, I'm generally able to get through a first playthrough without dying more than, say, 10 to 15 times a boss. And because I've been playing this game uh, so constantly since the, uh, since the what do you call it, the Let's Play, um, I feel pretty comfortable with most of the bosses. I would say the Demon of Hatred still gives me trouble, but the rest of them are going to end up, uh, I think, being... I don't know, probably two or three fights a piece at max to kill them. Anyway, with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and enhance our attack power. Uh, we do have four prayer beads now, so we'll also enhance our physical attributes. And we're going to go ahead and head up. Now, I do want to call out one thing real quick. Uh, in a little while, the, you will not be able to transport back to this place using the uh, fast travel. And the reasoning is because there's going to be a Shichiman warrior who shows up here. And that'll be something that we can come back to fight a little bit later. So um, kind of pay attention to that as you're beginning to do fast travels around um, after this point. Uh, remember that once you see the idol go unteleportable, you'll, you'll, ba you'll basically see it grayed out on the uh, listing of travel points. Uh, you can basically come back here and do that. We'll probably do it in the next couple of episodes, I would say. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and head up. And up some more. And there are these things. I hate these things. I hated them in Ashina Castle, and I still hate them now. They don't like stabs, though, especially if you're fighting one at a time. When you're not fighting them one at a time, this attack works really well to thin the herd. There we go. Okay, so from here... Uh, we're going to be heading that way. Uh, one thing I want to call out is that uh, Jin Zaymon, if you did not give him over to J uh, to J Dunin, 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 I think it's Dunin, Dujin, Dujin. If you did not give him over to Dujin, he will be out here, and uh, you can basically talk to him, kind of continue his quest. Now we ended up uh, giving him over to Dujin because we actually want to complete Kotaro's um, quest line and. So we ended up ta uh, taking him and giving him over to Anayama the Peddler, and that's going to get us a 10% promissory note, which is basically going to be a discount on all items. But we won't get that until we get to near the end of the game. And whenever we come back to play through this game on a new game plus in order to get the Shura ending, 
Unfortunately, we will not be getting far enough in order to complete that, but we will be getting far enough to complete Jinzaemon's quest, so we will be coming back to do his later and kind of doing the reverse configuration in the next playthrough, but for now, we're going to go ahead and head through here. You'll actually find him again after this place, so make sure to talk to him here if you're already here and you see him. Uh, and then you'll actually see him in, right after the Orin of the Water fight, which is going to be not, probably not this episode, but maybe in the next episode, I suspect. Anyway, go ahead and rest. Be aware that this lower area is basically covered in fog. Uh, we will have to traverse some of the fog in a little bit, but... Uh, the fog down here is particularly dangerous because there are a lot of um, kind of spirit enemies that will pop up on the ground here, and they are super deadly. So uh, there's also a headless down here too, and in my opinion, he's the hardest of the head hardest of the headless in the game. So I'm going to recommend that you hold off on going down there until we clear out the fog. So that's what we're going to be planning to do here. So drop down here. Grab the Mew Boo Balloon. Got another one of these things. Pop down here for a Ceramic Shard. Pop back up. You can talk to this guy if you want to. He'll tell you about the fact that there's a guy that's no longer following the Buddha. And then we want to jump up here. Kill this real quick. And we have a pellet. Okay, so now we are about to have to traverse the area containing some fog. So we're actually just going to kind of be running towards the goal here. Um, I'm not going to bother picking up any of the items because there are a lot of enemies out here. A lot of them will turn invisible and be able to attack you from uh, basically a lot easier. So a whole bunch of dogs down here too. So I don't recommend dealing with any of these enemies if you can avoid it. Now though, just go this way. I'm going to jump up here, try to avoid the enemies that are here. And you can see the grapple point right there. So we're actually going to jump down, climb up here. So there's a mini boss down, or down there. This is basically a Juzo the junk, Drunkard um, clone, I guess you could say. He's surrounded by a bunch of monkeys. We're not going to face him yet, though, so... We're just going to go ahead and run through here. Once we clean up the area of all this fog, we'll be coming back to deal with the enemies and getting the items. So grapple up here. Grapple up here. Got some wax, and if you had gone farther into this area, you would have seen the bottom section of this place. And we can get into the window here in order to attack the thing that's in here that's causing all this fog. So we're going to grapple over to here. And we're going to head around. So we're going to basically do a drop attack on this thing. Uh, we want to basically kill it as quickly as possible. So I'm going to start spamming Whirlwind Slash once I get my first death blow off of him. I want him to die quick. These guys really suck. So once you kill him, the illusion will fade. In addition, the fog will be gone. And now we can go and acquire all of the items that are in this place much, much safer. So we're going to grab a sugar. 
Now this is our final goal. So once we finish up kind of the all the stuff that's back here, we're gonna head towards this way. Uh, this is gonna be going to Mibu Village, which is gonna be the destination of another mini boss, as well as a another boss, the Corrupted Monk, or False Corrupted Monk, I should say. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and head around here and go grab all the items. So come over here for a ceramic shard. We got some oil. Some more oil. Down here we got light coin purse, bite down, and contact medicine. Back here we got yellow gunpowder. So there's also an item in front of the thing over there. You can see it over there. We're going to grab some more bite down. We're going to go ahead and grab. Uh, let's see. This item, too. Another heavy coin purse. So you can see that blue thing up there. It's actually where we found the Juzo clone. Come up here before we head back to the Juzo clone, though. Oh, wow. They don't usually come over here. Oh, well. So you want to basically hug the wall. Whenever I first was coming through here, I was thinking, uh, like, is that the ability that allows you to, like, cling to the wall? I was thinking, is this, like... Is this, like, Ninja Gaiden? Not quite. Or Shinobi, for that matter. Uh, this, by the way, takes us uh, back. There's the Headless, by the way, that I talked about before. We're going to tackle him and grab the items later. But if you want to come back through here, uh, you can. Okay, so we're about to deal with this Juzo wannabe. He has all the same attacks as the normal Juzo enemy. He happens to be surrounded by a bunch of these monkeys, though, so I'm going to kill them all from afar. So once they are dead, we're going to go ahead and grab... Yeah, I'll go into Gosh and Sugar again. And we're going to try to get this guy in silence. Sometimes he's harder to get in silence. But let's see if we can. There we go. Okay, so. From here, if you want to... Um, Again, his attacks are pretty much the same, though if you're like me <laughs> and you didn't actually fight the other one, I basically ended up uh, death blowing the first one using Agashin Sugar. Uh, and then after that, I ended up uh, getting the help of the guy against Juzo. And so I don't really I don't really have this guy's attacks nailed down. So we can use firecrackers, of course, to interrupt his attacks. Uh, we can use um, Mist Raven, if you really want to, to uh, try to avoid his attacks. Kind of up to you how you want to do this one, but um, I'm just going to th uh, probably go with uh, Flame Vent, Aqua Sugar, give him some oil as well. And if I'm feeling uh, funny, I can probably hit him with Fistful of Ash. So I'm going to walk into here and you can actually get him stuck. Hi, stuck.
So we got some unrefined sake. We'll be able to give this to uh, Ishinashina, Emma, and the sculptor. Get another prayer bead for our troubles as well. Another fistful of ash. And then we're going to come over here to grab this item, which we missed out on earlier. So, got a pellet. Oh, I guess I'll just go up. That makes sense. <clears throat> All right, so we are back to the building and I believe we've gotten all the items. Let me double check the roof. I don't think I have ever checked the roof here. Okay, yeah. Nothing on the roof. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and head to Mibu Village. We will be coming back through here, of course, to deal with the Headless a little later. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and start heading down. Now, there's going to be some more of these kind of uh, pseudo spirit version enemies of some things here. So, uh, again, eh, I think they're kind of irritating, but they're not too bad, I guess. So, some items around here. We're going to be collecting those as we go down. But here they are. Man, they got a lot of damage on them. So, off the edge here, you see that there is an item down there. There's also an enemy right there. Uh, this is one of these uh, hard ninja-type enemies who likes to do their kicks. So, what I'm actually going to recommend doing is uh, drop attack this guy. Good night. Get a treasure scale, too, for our troubles. Got another memorial mob here, so we can talk to him here in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and collect all the other items that are up here. about all the dogs that are out here. All right, so we got a light coin purse. Drop down here for a lump of fat wax. And that is Mibu Village. In fact, if you start to go around here, you'll actually have enemies start to pop out of the ground. So that's actually, I think, we're gonna, where we're going to wrap it. So we'll go ahead and head over here, talk to the Memorial Mob, see if he's got anything that we want at this point. So he's got some treasure carp scales. He's got some dragon spring sake. We actually want the sake because, again, uh, we want to make sure that we have all three of the NPCs that uh, drink sake, uh, Ishin, Emma, and the Sculptor, drink all of their sake before a particular part in the game where we can no longer give it to them. Because that will, again, help with the story. It'll also actually change some of Wolf's dialogue because he'll be more aware of what's going on whenever some story elements happen. <clears throat> Otherwise, Where you? I'll go ahead and use... Oh, let's see. A heavy coin purse, I guess. And a light coin purse. Cat. 
We're going to grab the Dragon Spring Sake now. So a couple other things. He's got the Mottled Purple Gourd. This is excellent for dealing with any enemies that deal terror damage. So whenever we're dealing with the Shichiman Warriors or the uh, Headless enemies, this will be really useful to us as well. He also sells, of course, Treasure Carp Scales. We're going to be trading those to the Treasure Carp um, no Pot Nobles, I guess, uh, a little later. But with that, I think that's going to end up wrapping out this episode. So we're going to head over to the Sculptor's Idol up here. And in the next episode, we're going to uh, progress into Mibu Village. And we're going to end up finding a mini boss, Oren of the Water. And then we're also going to end up fighting the Corrupted False Monk. Or False Corrupted Monk, I guess. So that's going to be kind of what we're looking to do in the next episode. But until then, thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.